This could be one of the biggest releases this year. We've got the brand new FCX10 from FMS. This is a one-tenth scale, fully licensed Chevy K5 Blazer. This thing is packed full of features. It's got to be one of the most feature-rich rigs you can buy right now. It comes in three different colours. You've got the brown, the orange, all the black. This thing has so many features, it comes with an 11 channel transmitter. <laughs> Out of the box, an 11 channel transmitter. This thing is like an IKEA build. You know, you, you think you can get away without the reading instructions, and you realise, no, you really do need to read the instructions. <laughs> So you've got your really nice scale body. Now, something a bit different from FMS. This is actually a Lexan body, not a hard body. But, you know, you've got all your usual kind of nice scale details. You've got really nice door handles, mirrors. You've got windscreen wipers. You've got your really nice chrome grille. You've got your chrome bumpers. You've got number plates. Obviously, it's fully licensed. So you've got your Chevy badge. You've got working LEDs on the front and the rear. I'll show you those in a moment. On the rear, you've got your really nice chrome bumper. You've got your LED lights. You've got your Chevy badge. For your rear bed, you've got the option of either the roll bar or you've got the optional rear bed cover that you can stick on. It does also come with your clear windows and you also get decals for it. And you get all the bits and pieces you need and some spare number plates and stuff like that. The body actually has a brand new body mount design system as well. You've basically got the tabs that go through on the front and the rear. And then you basically pull these pieces which then basically releases the body. Underneath you can see you've got a metal chassis, you've got nice thick metal four-link suspension front and rear. You've got plastic and metal drive shafts, and then obviously you've got your portal axles, you've got metal steering links on the front, and you've got a metal servo arm. So to get the body off, we're gonna pull those tabs in on the front and the rear. There's your mounting mechanism on the front and on the rear. It's actually got magnet connectors as well for your LED lights. And then you've got all your light control unit and everything in there. Really nice and tidy wiring and everything as well, which is really, really cool. And then you can see your magnets on the back as well. So when you attach your body, that's how your LED lights get their power. Now, mine's got inner arch liners. They came included with the kit. I'm not actually sure if they're going to be included when it goes on sale, um, but they were included as free items on the pre-release that I got. You've got your all-in-one ESC and receiver. You've got your 550 21 turn motor. You've got a metal geared steering servo up front. You've actually got four mini servos to control your diff locks, your dig, um, your two speed and everything. It doesn't include a battery, but you've got your battery tray and you actually get some nice uh, Velcro straps as well. Again, you can see everything's really nice and tidy, all the wiring, everything. Now, one thing I do really like about this, I've ran this about four or five times already. Like I said, I've mudded it, I've taken it to the beach and rock crawled it, it's gone for some salt water. I've washed it about four times and none of the screws are rusty which that in itself says something to me. You know, a lot of murder rigs, naming no names, but, you know, you wash them a couple of times and all your screws are crusty and everything. So, you know, I was really impressed with the fact that, you know, all the screws are still nice and black. Your battery is an XT60 connector. Suspension-wise, you've got metal adjustable shocks and they're oil-filled. Really nice suspension movement on this thing. When you see it on the trail, when it's flexing, ah, oh, it is beautiful. I absolutely love the suspension movement on this thing. Wheels and tyres, they're FMS branded tyres, the, they're these super marshes, but they're actually really sticky. They are vented, but they're actually really good grip. When I ran them on the rocks, I was amazed how well they did. So that's one thing I was really happy to see, because sometimes the tyres you get with the FMS rig, you know, they're not the best. Now, if you don't want to read the manual, I'll take you through all the functionality in this transmitter, and then I'll show you it all working on the rig. Channel 3 is unused. Channel 4 is for your 2-speed. Channel 5 is for your lights. You just basically push it forward to have your lights on, push it back to have your lights off. Channel 6 allows you to do so front-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, or dig. Uh, and you can switch it as well, so you could have it rear-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, or dig. Channel 7 is for your front diff lock. Channel 8 is for your rear diff lock. 9 and 10 aren't used. And then 11 is to actually set your drag brake. So you can actually adjust it and turn it to set how much drag brake you want. The drag brake is quite vicious, I found on this thing. So, you know, when I was running it, I had it kind of like three quarters. 
And then obviously you can see, you know, you've got your switch pad for changing different modes. You can do all your steering and throttle reverse, your trims, your dual rates and everything like that. I really like this transmitter. It's really nice. It's a Fly Sky transmitter, basically. It's the FS MG11. But yeah, it is a really nice transmitter. To have something like this included out of the box with a rig, I think it's awesome. So first off, we're in first gear. You've got a nice slow speed control. And then you can give it full throttle in first. It's got plenty of wheel speed, even just in first gear. And then if we press channel four to change to our two speed. You can see that thing is, uh, yeah, it's got some go in it. And then one of the really nice things about this is you've got your independent locking diffs on the front and the rear. So unlike something like the Traxxas TRX4, where you can basically only lock the rear or the rear and the front, on this thing you can lock them independently. So you could just have your rear diff locked or you could just have your front diff locked. So first off your rear diff, got them both unlocked at the moment. You can see one wheel keeps spinning while the other one doesn't. So we've got open diffs. And then if we lock the rear diffs with channel eight, Now you can see it's locked. And then the same for the front diff. If we lock the diffs with channel seven. At the moment, obviously we're in four wheel drive. If we switch it forwards on channel six, now we've got our dig function. So our rear, wheel, our rear wheels are locked and only our front ones are turning. And obviously to do that, you do have to have the rear diff locked. Otherwise, if we unlock it, we'll just be able to spin it freely and then obviously dig's not going to work. So for dig to work, you need to make sure you lock the rear diffs and then they're not going to turn. Then for channel six, if we go the other way, I think I might have said it was the wrong way a minute ago, but all the way the other way. And then now you've just got front wheel drive and your rear can just freewheel. And you can manually change it so that so that that would just give you rear wheel drive instead of front wheel drive. You can swap it around, but obviously out of the box it comes like that, so you can use the dig function. And once your body's back on and you've powered it on, to turn your lights on, you're just gonna basically push channel five all the way forward, and then your lights come on, and then you've also got indicators when you're turning as well. Then on the rear, you've got your indicators as well. And then you've just basically got brake lights or reverse lights, so when you push Obviously reverse on the throttle, you're going to get your brake lights or your reverse lights. Now, I did say in the instructions you could get tail lights, but I haven't figured out how to get the tail lights to work, so <laughs> I must be missing something. The steering sieve has actually got a really decent amount of power in it and plenty of speed. You know, that's on the desk with the grippy tyres. You know, it's got a nice bit of angle, it's nice and fast and responsive. So yeah, I didn't have any issue with the steering server whatsoever, and I thought it was actually really, really good. So like I said, I've already ran it. We'll check out the running footage in a moment, but just to give you a summary of what I think of it, I think it's a really well-performing rig out of the box. You know, um, the tyres have got fantastic grip. It's actually got a really nice bit of low-down weight. The flex, I mean, look at that flex. That is just awesome. It's just got flex for days. Love the suspension movement. You know, it looks awesome. Really like the amount of oil in these shocks and the weight. It is really nice. I think it performed really, really well. I was really happy with the two speed, the diff locks. You know, everything worked as it should do when I was out on the trail and out on the rocks and everything. Even when I was mudding it. The only issue I had with it was I think the slipper clutch is a little bit too loose out of the box. Because when I was trying to do like second gear launches, the slipper clutch would slip and then it would go. You know, other than that slipper clutch, I had nothing to complain about. I think it's fantastic. And I mean, I don't know the price yet, because um, obviously this is a pre-release model, but I believe for the price, with all the features that it has, it's gonna be a bit of a showstopper, to be honest. So yeah, this thing is just awesome. 
And for an out-of-the-box transmitter, this has got to be one of the nicest transmitters you can get. Well, in all the rigs that I've got anyway. I absolutely love this thing. And I know people hate hearing us say it, but it is so nice to use one-handed driving. So yeah, absolutely love this thing. Let me know what you think of it in the comments. Are you going to get one? Which colour are you going to get? Okay, let's try our trail speed. Um, we've got all the diffs unlocked. We're in four-wheel drive. We're going to try first gear first of all, and then we'll try second gear. You see it's got plenty of wheel speed just in first gear. Let's try second. I doubt I'm going to be able to run after it. <laughs> it's a little ripper in second gear. I've got no chance of running after that. I'm not even going to try to be honest. Yeah, second gear, 3S. That is rapid. Let's test out the dig function. We're up against the tree, so let's just, you know, say that you didn't want to reverse and you were stuck by an obstacle. So what you want to do is you're going to need to lock the front and the rear diffs. Obviously, if the front diffs unlock, you're just going to be wheel, you're just going to be one wheel peeling. And for the dig to work, you need the rear diff locked. So let's lock both of those. So let's lock the front and then the rear. On the controller for channel six, we're just going to flip it to the left, and then that should be now in dig. So turn your wheels full lock. We literally just turn on the spot and now we're facing completely opposite direction. So if you were doing a competition or something like that and you were allowed to use the dig function but you weren't allowed to reverse, well there you go, you just basically just swung yourself around as long as you've got the space. So yeah, that is really cool. I'm uh, going to try and play with that as much as I can. Here's a nice interesting challenge. Let's see if we can get over these logs just uh, manoeuvring over them. Nice and slow in first gear. Nice, lovely bit of flex there. Lovely, straight over it. Nice, bumper just about cleared. Okay, and then as we're a bit stuck, let's test out the wheel speed. So we're still in first gear. Just a little bit of punch. <laughs> I say a little bit. <laughs> nice. I do love it when you've got a rig that can crawl nice and slowly, you know, but then you've got a nice bit of punch as well, so that if you get stuck on an obstacle like that, you can just throttle it and just get over it. Okay, let's test out the diff locks. So we are so we're unlocked at the moment, front and rear diffs. So it's going to just do a little bank climb, you know, we should get to a point where we get stuck. And then we'll lock the diffs just so we can see what the difference is like. So you can see that front wheel's hardly turning, your rear left's turning, and both wheels on the right are turning. Okay, so now if we lock the front and the rear diff, so that's the front. That's the rear locked. Now you can see that front left wheel is turning at the same time. So all the wheels on the right as well. So at least now we've got locked dips. Obviously it's uh, rather muddy, so I can't guarantee we get out of here. But let's give it a bit of wheel speed. There we go, we made it up there. So yeah, there's a difference between the unlocked and the locked. Most rigs come with just fully locked diffs. The reason you'd want to use unlocked diffs is because it gives you a greater turning circle, gives you a bit more maneuverability, and sometimes when you're on rocks and stuff like that, actually having it open can make a little bit of a difference. Um, I'm no expert crawler and I'm certainly no comp crawler, so you know I don't know every technical detail about it, but yeah, obviously having the option, at least you've got it there if you want to do it, I generally run my rigs locked all the time. On my TRX4, I permanently lock them. Um, but yeah, at least you can see how it works and you can see the diff locks are actually working. And you can see this thing's got plenty of wheel speed, which is one of the things I love, being able to power out of situations like that. I did just roll it a minute. Thankfully, I found the light that came off. But yeah, as I was messing around on the bank by here, I rolled it over and one of the, uh, one of the lights came off. So I obviously didn't do the screw up tight enough. But we got a really nice bank here. This one is quite tricky. 
quite muddy. You can see that's the incline, you know, I don't know what it is, but it's pretty steep. But let's just try crawl up here with slow speed first of all. I mean, my tires are pretty muddy now, but I'm really liking these stock tires. I think they're the best FMS tires have been on any rig to date. You know, they are really, really good. But let's try run it up here. If we can't get up with slow speed, let's give it a bit of wheel speed and see if we can get up there. This used to be my normal one-tenth scale challenge for most rigs to see if they had the power and the grip to get up there. It's also a really good way of testing that stability because obviously if they're really top heavy it's just going to tip over and roll back down but we are getting a bit stuck so we're going to have to give it a bit of wheel speed I think. Nice, made it up there, nothing like a bit of wheel speed that was just in first gear as well. Look how covered in mud those tyres are. Oh, they are so cool. Just to give you an idea of what we just did, just in case you couldn't see it from down there, that's what we just came up. That's pretty steep. That did a really good job. I am chuffed with that. This thing is awesome. I'm really enjoying it. It's got the looks that you'd expect from an FMS rig, but the performance on it is outstanding, you know. I mean, the features that you get, you know, it seems really tough, packed full of features. I mean, granted, I'm probably not going to use all of them, but it's nice to have them. And for value for money, I mean, it's insane, isn't it? But... We've got some lovely churned up mud here to go through. Let's see how it does, just going through a bit of mud. Now it does say it's waterproof, so uh, let's find out, shall we? We could take the easy way, or we could take the hard way. Difficult decision. Yeah, that was pretty easy too, to be honest. Plus it gave it a wash at the same time. Well, kind of, a bit of a wash.